But what is Magnus doing with his king on e1 still? Yeah, is the, this scares me a lot. And look at uh, Richard's clock situation. Yeah, Richie on fire here. I don't know. This is something where Black can really feel that. All right, I get some tremendous attack. F5, rook a8. I don't know in which move order, but I'm very tempted to go for the initiative. But f5, you have a lot of pieces competing for the f4 square, right? It's like your pawn and your bishop and knight, or you're, or you're just going f5 to support the knight, and that's it. I want to support, yeah. I don't want to push it because I want to keep as much pressure on the position. I only don't know that maybe rook e8 is even a more flexible move. Mm -hmm. One drop the bishop back, maybe. Yeah, and also to hide this knight f4 possibility. Uh, let me just rewind the last couple of moves. That what happened here that Magnus refused to castle because this is the shocking news of the early moves. Knight bd2, castles, trade, trade, and the move rook d1. So he wants to use the d file, but it isn't so obvious what exactly he can achieve there. Richie in full focus mode. He feels that, okay, I got a good opening. I have to. I have something to play with. Okay, we have also Duda versus Van for Reese. An interesting move by Duda. He just played Queen A5. Just second there because, wow! And Richie goes look at here. This is. Yeah. This is a move that shows also some kind of uh, respect towards the opponent. Yeah, that, okay, I'm not going to go for direct attack. I just want to keep the position. Everything is fine for me. All right, the game slows down. Where you want to go? Oh, well, it's okay. White's going to castle here. We can stay a little bit longer on this game. Like castles, do you think... Um... Hmm. So there's some issues with black playing knight f4. It's not so easy tactically, yeah? Yeah, knight f4 we just take, bishop f4, and then... And then you just... have problems on the d-file. So what is Black's, what is Black going to do after castle? Because Magnus is almost certainly going to play that. Yeah, the game slightly slows down. Wow, there is a... Can I shock you with knight x 3 I have a draw with knight x 3 if oh, I want. Oh, beautiful. B takes oh, knight c3, f4. knight f4, oh, queen nice. e1, knight d3. Nice, nice. My opponent is Magnus Carson. Is draw okay? Can I ask the captain? Yeah, just uh, what what are the rules yeah, here? I'm playing black. Yeah. Yes, but also after queen one, I don't know if can I speculate on knight x h three check. Is it too much? Oh, give it a try because you have rookie six coming. Yeah, right? exactly. I'm not Eight sure. Takes. The, the does... knight can't move. The queen and the rooks are like yeah. too slow. Well, but you don't have to necessarily right. have to take on h three. This disturbs me a bit. But okay, let's just imagine that takes takes. Well, and Magnus is posing because after rook f8, now he's in such an unpleasant spot, right? After castles, he has to foresee everything till the end. It Very kind of scary. feels like white might be just losing here, no? Yes. This is like some martial gambit or something, yeah? It's, uh, it's checkmate. So what a scary situation for Magnus. Is there some argument that it's a rapid game and I don't know exactly, I don't want to spend all my time, then I just take on e4 and and play a position, but you don't want to take on e4, normally. Because of d takes e4. Yes. That's okay, not the let's, plan. let's rewind, let's take a look at that. So if he takes on e4 here to avoid that, Richie is... And, and look at this, Magnus moving on his chair. He's not feeling comfortable. This is a very unpleasant scenario for him with the white pieces, not getting any stability. So knight takes e4, we speculated. For example, okay, we take d takes c4. Aren't we happy? Knight d4, yeah, black is super comfortable, right? Yeah, I just have to, I have this knight e5, knight d3 idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, if that knight really lands there. Magnus in a very unpleasant spot. Mm, I guess castles. Yeah, but this knight takes c knight f4, <laughs> it's forced. It's... Uh, it's a horror scenario. But it's so difficult to conquer. Of course, if someone then Magnus is able to kind of navigate this, but oof. The problem is he also see, and he takes on e4, yeah. He's not happy, but he takes on e4. Okay, let's see how quickly Richie is gonna capture back with the pawn. 
I mean, he could also consider taking with the rook, but the pawn is sort of better long term. Yes. One has this idea, but d takes e4. Maybe Magnus wants to go knight d2 to, to stop knight e5, because then the e4 pawn is hanging, and then some knight c4 is coming. Because I certainly don't want to let this knight all the way to d3. He's in an unpleasant position there. No yeah. matter what he does, right? Then knight d2, there might be some knight h4, and again, like, can you castle really? <laughs> some questions. All the time, some questions, yeah. And also the body language, yeah, Magnus sits sideways, signals that he's more in a defensive mode. He needs to survive the next couple of moves and then play a normal chess game because, uh, unfortunately for him, he is faced with very unexpected problems right after the opening. I don't know, should we stay here, should we move, because probably we have tons of other action. Okay, let's take a look then at Duba versus Ding, because it looks like Ding has sacrificed uh, the exchange. I'm loving it. That's the way. How did he do it? Knight g5, c5, on was on mm -hmm. the board. Was it, yeah? Bishop takes e4, yes. Bishop ta knight takes cd. Okay, so he took the center pawn and wants to get the light squared bishop, and... Just wants to play e5, e4 after that. Very ambitious. Okay, this is the Dingley and the whole world, the whole chess world wants to see. And then we know that we are talking about a 2800 player. Yes, this is, uh, this is the way it's in the spirit. He's getting his confidence. Maybe it was a fantastic idea to, to come here for Ding. Yeah? And after all, he became world champion here in Astana. Mm -hmm. And now he started with three out of three and he plays excellent chess in the opening against Daniel Dubov. Yeah, I mean, now he's got that extra pawn on d4. And what can White do other than take the rook? He just took it. Queen a8, castles on the board. And I guess we're going to be seeing e5 here. Oh, he castles queenside? Yeah, castles queenside. Queen. Oh. No, he castled kingside. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I saw like rook after queenside castle, rook c8 followed by b5. Looks like... Uh, Suicide. So, okay, so on sure. e5, he probably wants to go bishop g5, yes. right? Yes, this and because this chance. bishop on f4 is such a bad piece, I probably would prefer not... Six. Yeah, maybe h6 is a super ambitious move. So it's the question, yeah, how to evaluate the position after e5, bishop g5. Yes, so the question that can you... But I don't believe that you will be able to push e4, e4. quickly and then knight e5 because something might happen. Because of rookie one or something. Yeah, at least it requires very precise calculation. Mm -hmm. Even then it looks like... <laughs> yeah, you don't want to... Everything is so nice for black. Yeah, that it's compact. Uh, yeah, h6 followed by e5. And if that white bishop would have mm -hmm. to retreat, it would be catastrophe. I believe that white will be trying somewhere some bishop d6 intermeds. But e5 on the board, okay. By the way, um, Vadim Rosenstein looks like he might be having a problem on his board. Uh, maybe we can just take a look at it because it's pretty important for the WR team. And Oof. there was a sacrifice on D5 that he probably missed. And he loses a couple of those center pawns. And it looks like he's going to be losing a piece and it might just be a bad position for him. It's it's kind of game over, yeah. Against Muhtad uh, Aynakul. That's put some pressure on his teammates. Yeah, um, so far... Today, Vadim was uh, very shaky. Yeah? He already lost two games, and uh, now he ends up in a lot of trouble right from the beginning. Okay, we can take a look at <clears throat> Serana versus Prague. That Nimzo, yeah? Where mm -hmm. did it lead us? Also feels very dangerous with all this Bishop B1 move looming. I'm he's not... planning for f5, yeah? Yes, well, I don't think that he's planning, he is forced. Yeah? <laughs> it's certainly not a happy kind of move, but white has so many different, different possibilities here. Up well, at on some the point, clock. the d4 pawn is going to hang, right? So we might want to... Yes, for the moment, there is oh, always yeah. this bishop b4 idea, yeah? So knight takes d4, mm -hmm. uh, potentially somewhere, right now you have this knight takes f3 check, but I believe that somewhere this tactic was maybe important. 
What happened after 94? So just very quickly, C, D, E, D, bishop C7, let me remove the arrows. Bishop A2, takes, takes, queen D6, because whenever we see the previous moves, it's so much easier to understand what's really happening. So bishop C8, bishop C3, protecting the pawn. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And keeping D4, D5 Five. ideas, wow. Yeah, this is very unpleasant. Okay, does it look like Prague maybe has to go knight e7? I think it does, doesn't it? But then bishop b1. Then bishop b1. That's the problem. Queen f4, queen c2 played very quickly by Serana. Why so fast? Why was that so obvious to him? Well, he had to trade and he wants to still keep the diagonal, yeah? Probably that's the end. Serana is also famous of putting pressure on the clock as well. Okay, Ragnanda in some kind of a trouble, Magnus not having a good opening, <clears throat> Vadim Rosenstein in trouble, this is a very shaky match. But you know, um, Rapport actually decided to take with a rook on e4, so he okay. did surprise us there a bit. Okay, he takes with the rook, but still this knight f4, knight x h3 ideas are hanging in the air, so Magnus still has to find the move, and down to six minutes, have you ever seen Please tell me, anyone in the chat, a game by Magnus Carlsen in a rapid time control when after move 15, he only had six minutes with the white pieces. I think we are writing history here. Okay, knight g5 and knight f4. Wow, actually the clock just updated. It looks like Magnus has two minutes. Wow. Wait a second, what's this knight f4 about? Is well, what, about, what is knight g5 about also, yeah? yeah? It's like you have the king on you, <laughs> yes. that, that's what I'm... That's what I'm saying. And then Richie is sensing the moment. Queen, queen f3, three. queen f5 on the board. Queen b5, it looks like. A queen b5, yeah. Wow, queen wow. b5 bleeds the b5. Stopping castles. Three. So no, you're, you're no longer. And you can't, uh, you can't take that rook because, because of checkmate. Needed. Yes, wow. let's let just put this. Wow, stunner. Mm. Queen b5, what a move, and Magnus has no time on the clock. Oh, wow, this could be uh, a surprising result if Magnus loses with the white pieces. And it's usually bodes quite badly for the team, yeah, if Magnus loses. Oof, and in so much trouble right from the beginning. And Jan is also looking in horror, look at this. Oh, yeah, well, Jan has been in a pretty boring endgame. Um, playing very quickly, but without a lot of interesting stuff going G3 on. G3 played. I think G3 was played. That's what I... Yeah, G3 on the board. Okay, so he's trying to survive, is there, so... Is there any tactic? No. So knight D3, he's going to sack the rook and then take on E4, go back with a queen. Yeah, and then queen B1, check queen D1, and the bishop on D6 is hanging. This is kind of the key resource of Magnus's defense, but also knight d3, rook takes, then f7 pawn is hanging. It's uh, what a wild position. Mm -hmm. It's very tricky. Is there a threat, though? Let's say white to move, apart from obvious pawn takes knight, yeah? Or maybe yeah. It, is, it is enough of a threat. That's, that's a big yeah. threat, yeah. And, and Richie is, because he had to foresee the move g3, it was the only move. Mm. So knight d3 is really the main move. Are there other options like rook takes e3? Takes e3 yeah, is actually... takes and knight then you go knight d3. But then... It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. It's possible because you can never take on f7. What happened? Did he jump with something? I mean, the white king will be very weak there, right? So maybe we need to look at that. I am looking at the well, live board. Richie played him. Ah, he played f6. Wow. Okay. Also really interesting. Very interesting. Putting the pressure. What a move. Very uncomfortable for Magnus. Yeah, knight and e I still can't take the rook. Yes. And this g takes f4, f takes g5 operation, and then Black's look is joining the party with look f8. Looks super scary. Wow. The whole position is upside down. <laughs> yeah, under a minute. 
Well, Magnus is knight is trapped, so he pretty much has to take on f4, right? Yeah, but it's uh, it it leads to a very bad position. But what else to do? Not much. Yeah, the fact that White hasn't castled in almost 20 moves is becoming a big problem. Down to 30 seconds. Yeah, good or bad, he will have to take on f4, but he's not happy. Okay, he took. Look, fg5. fg5, all right. Okay, so look at it. Everything is as everyone knew already. And now maybe Queen E2. Queen E2 is rookie three. Finishes yeah, Queen E2 game, rookie right? three finishes the game. Yeah, that's mm. the big problem. Oh, okay, he was going to win the queen. That's a stunner. Because F takes wow. E3, Bishop G3 check, Rook F2, and Queen E3, Rook E8 wins the queen. So he had to go back to G2. For what? But this is now hopelessly uh, also, lost according to the computer. Who is is hanging. Although I don't know if we even want to And he can to... castle. No, yeah. then Magnus says, please, I give everything, just let me castle. But also some D4 ideas. No, I mean, okay, sorry, the, the Rook on E4 is hanging, but some Rook F8 and then D4. How about Bishop's, Bishop F4? Bishop F4, also possible. Everything. He has a lot of time. He has eight minutes to figure this out. Yes, so many options. With eight minutes on the clock. Do we read? It's correct, yeah. Magnus has 22 seconds. Unbelievable. The only thing Richard has to, to so make sure that he bishop comes F4? down. How does he even hold yeah. the bishop on E3? Yeah. Let's put it on the board. I would love Meanwhile. to sacrifice the queen, but I cannot. There's not a lot of ways to defend that bishop. Yeah, queen f1 runs into rook takes e3 check. f3 bishop g3 winning on the spot. So... But Richard is taking his time. Okay, bishop f4, rook d2 is rook d2 and then trying to go king d1, king c1. Artificial castle idea. Is that a way to try to survive? Maybe look D2. One thing also, look F8 followed by D4. Extremely tempting. Oops. Nepo's game finished in a draw. Okay. Lubov's game finished in a draw, which I'm very disappointed with. <laughs> Who is? Wow, but look F8 played. Yeah, Richie is playing the move that I also come somehow sense that not D4 F1. is coming. Queen f1. Yeah, okay, what uh, to do? You think, so you think he's not just trying to sack on e3? Wait a second. He, he's, isn't he threatening don't we just to win. e3? Don't we just win? Take e3, go bishop g3 check. Yeah, and he couldn't be two. It's over, yeah, king d3 will be only move. It can't really be holding on for too long. Bishop f2. Yes, to, bishop f2. To show off a little bit yes. <laughs> at the very end, yeah. Wow, so let's put rookie three on the board. Yeah, so this is the line takes. we are discussing because it's forced and it's a total horror. After king d3, the key move mentioned by Miro, bishop f2. Maybe many other things are also good, but this wins on the spot. There is no defense against rookie three. And we are looking at uh, Magnus. Is it correct? It's, it's right what I'm seeing, but uh, Richie took on B2 mm -hmm. instead. Which isn't terrible. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the resignation. Wow, what That's a... Huge result. Yeah, huge result. What a win. What a performance by Richard Rapport. He shocked Magnus Carlsen.